Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is our Simple Abundance Year. We're following along in 2020 with Sarah Von Bronick's new edition, the 2019 version of her book, Simple Abundance. And my channel is dedicated to her principles, which are joy, beauty, simplicity, harmony, gratitude, and order. So it's gonna be a great year. I'm glad you're along for the ride with me. And if you haven't had a chance to watch my intro video, check that out because I did discuss in that video about my plans for the year and a little bit about me and my channel. So as we're now at the beginning of January, I don't know if you've gotten your hands on the book, hopefully you have and you've had a chance to read a few of the entries, but you can get a sense that she's sort of easing us into what this whole process is going to be. And January is really about getting this journey going and self-exploration, kind of evaluating where you're at, where you want to be, what you want out of this experience. And so she does ask some good questions in some of the first entries. I'm not going to specifically read anything from the book today. What I wanted to share was a process that I do either at the end of a year leading into the new year or directly following that like right at the beginning of the year like right now what I do and uh, it involves a journal so that would be something great to also have in addition to your purchase of the book or maybe you got it from the library I always pick up a new journal at the beginning of the year this is uh, I'm like really partial to these hardcover blue sky is the name of the brand journals that they sell at CVS they're not really expensive but they lay flat it's really great for writing it's like a college lined college ruled lined sheet so there's a lot of room by the end of the year I usually have almost the whole thing filled because I'm really a big journaler and I when I say journaling I'm not talking about dear diary like this is how today went I use my journal for things that I need to process or goals that I want to set or things like that. And I'm going to go through today the way that I set up my journal and, and what I do with a brand new journal in carrying things over from the previous year. So I'm just going to go ahead and read through the beginning of the journal to give you not, not my journal entries, but my various things in the way that I organize it. And you might get some inspiration from this. You might think that I'm crazy for all these lists and things that I come up with, but for me, like I said, just like in the start of the book, it's about evaluating, hey, where am I at? How happy am I? Is this what I want to keep as the status quo? Or what am I moving towards? Or what do I want to see on a day-to-day -day basis as my experience? So the first thing that I do on the very first page of my journal is I write an intention statement for the year. And if you're familiar at all with planners, I'm a big planner person also. Someday I'll probably do a video about my planner, but I'm big into the Franklin Covey system and there are a lot of things in that as far as like writing a mission statement and goal setting and things like that. So. This sort of evolved out of that idea, but it's an intention statement, kind of like a mission statement for the year. And over the past few years, I've chosen a specific word, which it sort of is, is like my theme word for the year. <laughs> so with 2020 being a double number year and the fact that in a few weeks, I'm also turning 44, I thought that was pretty cool and so I've decided that this year is my year of balance like I want to I really want to recapture my balance because I've been definitely way off balance just with some things I mentioned in the last video my life's been sort of up and down and I want to regain my balance I want to emulate it this year so when I wrote my intention statement for 2020 I definitely wrote it around that idea of balance and what balance means to me and how I hope to see that in various parts of my life. Um, the next thing, and it's, you know, that's just a short paragraph. It's not like 10 pages or anything, <laughs> but you might feel inspired to write that much. Uh, but the next thing is a list of what I call deliberate creations. I'm a big 
believer in that if you're familiar with that term it's an Abraham Hicks thing if you've heard of Abraham Hicks these are things I probably should put in the the uh, comment area or the description box so that you can click on links but deliberate creation is all about manifesting so I usually make a list of things that I am hoping and being mindful in my thoughts as far as what I want to be deliberate about and create for the year. So that's my first page. The next thing I do is I've taken a lot of seminars and I've worked with life coaches before. And uh, actually, I'm trying to think I'm not sure what seminar this came from, but it's something that I always have done at the beginning of the year in my journal. So I'm, I'm not able to cite the specific person or where this process come from comes from, but I make three lists and it's what do I want to do? What do I want to be? And what do I want to have? So doing could be my day to day things. What do I want to do for a living? That sort of things. Uh, of course, what do I want to be also could be, there could be a professional element to that. Say I want to be a movie star or something. I don't. <laughs> um, that would be what do I want to be. So it could be like I want to be a good daughter. I want to be a good sister. The roles that you have in your life. And then what do I want to have? That is not only materialistic things that you might be wanting to acquire, but it could be what do I want in my life? Do I want love? Do I want um, financial prosperity? That sort of thing. So what do I want to be? What do I want to do? And what do I want to have? Those are three separate lists that I make. The next page, I split down the middle and I have on one side, I have a list of what I consider to be my simple pleasures. And the other side is the things that fill my love tank. So what is your love tank? <laughs> um, this did come out of a seminar that I went to with a life coach uh, when I was at an event for my business. And I think of my love tank as, it's another way to say what kind of things fill my soul. So I think it's really important to identify these things. It might be something that you've never actually sat down and made a list of, but it is really important to identify that, you know, I'm thinking of some of the things on my love tank filling list are things like I love to be on the water. I just feel like I can breathe, I can relax, I feel like I get ideas. And so these are soul fulfilling things that that I want to have and, and experience. So that's the love tank list. Now, the simple pleasures is not that different from that. And you don't have to use my terminology by any means. You might be able to create a list that that is a good representation of both of these things. But I guess the the difference in my mind of what the simple pleasures are themselves are they're small little things not necessarily like when I say being on the water fills my love tank. That isn't something I can necessarily quantify unless I said I love to be on Lake George or something like that. But my simple pleasures are things like, like my very first one is bath time. I love taking baths. So I have bath salts, I have lotions, I do essential oils, I love all that stuff. So to me, having that bath time is just a simple pleasure. These are things, they don't cost a lot of money. Um, you know, like even something else on my list, this is so simple, but like writing with a nice pen, like I, I like to journal a lot and I, and I write a lot of things. So I like to f have the feeling of a nice pen. So does that fill my love tank? I mean, some of the things on the simple pleasures list can also fill your love tank, but I guess I consider the simple pleasures to be small little things like having fresh flowers on the counter. I love that and uh, drinking kombucha. So these are all little things that sort of like add flavor, if you will, to the day, especially if it's kombucha. I love kombucha. <laughs> uh, later in the year, in the book, there is a challenge. I think it's in April, if I'm not mistaken, 
uh, where it'll be good to have this sort of a list because there'll be a little activity about making sure that you're that you're filling your days with these little simple pleasures that that add up to make a much more joyful life and enriching experience day by day. The next list is these are ideas for the year of things that I want to do and experience. So I did make that list of what I want to do, but that's like an overall life list. This is more specific, almost like a bucket list, if you will, for the year. So maybe there's like a show I want to go see or, uh, you know, visiting a friend in a certain for a certain event, those sort of things. So this is like your your wish list for the year of just your ideas and you can add to it it could start off small maybe you're not used to journaling or you don't even take the time to give yourself the time to think about these things so you might just like get the things going with some of these ideas in your journal and then come back to them or as you're living your life you might oh that's something from my idea list for the year you know so don't <laughs> whatever you do have fun with this. It's not like an assignment. There's no homework with this. It's just, uh, these are just fun things I want to share with you that I get super jazzed about. I, I like to spend the time and put on some soft music and maybe have some tea and just contemplate these things. So I hope that you enjoy that too. Um, the next list is things that I'm going to carry over that were working well for me in the previous year or two and new things that I want to implement. So like for instance, in the morning I have, I set my alarm, but I also set it again for a half an hour later because in between I listened to a guided morning meditation from Louise Hay. So that's really working for me. And so I want to continue that. So that's on my list of things to continue. And then there are things that, uh, like I'm thinking of, what did I write? like implementing a stretching routine <laughs> I that's from last year I didn't I didn't succeed in that that's another thing this is not a pass fail this is definitely get that judgment out of your head and I'm sorry that I even just said that um, but as you're making these lists it's not gonna be like get rid of that self-talk where it's like oh I'm not gonna write that down because I won't do that no dream big have fun with it. And then at the end, you know, at the end of the year, give yourself some slack. Like I did want to stretch more. Maybe I'll put that on my list for 2020 and I will try to make it more of a priority. But if I didn't do it, then maybe it wasn't that important to me to begin with. So cut yourself some slack. Don't, don't make it a pass fail. Um, I think a lot of people have financial goals and, and I certainly do myself. Uh, my next two pages are related to that. One is a financial goal. You know, where do I want to be? How's it, how's it going? What are some, maybe some uh, measurable points that I can get to with my goals in the next year? And then the following page is just a fun way where I will, I call it my financial abundance manifestation. So it's, it's like a tracking of things, little things that happen. And I was actually reading over my list for last year and I would write down something as simple like I do remember I was getting one of the Beyond Burgers at Whole Foods one day and the guy gave me free cheese on it, you know, and, um, it was like a vegan cheese. And, and I wrote that down because I was like, hey, I got free cheese. <laughs> so it's just a fun little way and, and as things present themselves, it could be as small as like, hey, I'm seeing all these coins on the ground lately and hopefully you're picking them up because they're pennies from heaven uh, but you know it makes you remember that hey I need to acknowledge that I'm going to put that on my list of things that that happened and I definitely I mentioned the deliberate creating I'm big also on momentum because once you can get positive thoughts and appreciation, we'll talk a lot about gratitude this year, but once you can get the momentum going in the positive direction, the more the more is gonna come to you. And it's all a frame of reference too, because if you do start to notice those pennies, then you're gonna you're not even gonna be looking for them and they're gonna be all over, whereas like you might not have ever noticed them before and maybe you didn't acknowledge them and so they weren't there. <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. I'm getting into some things that I will do other videos on later, so I'm not gonna mention them yet, but uh, I do have another page for travel ideas. So these are like dream vacations. Uh, these are like day trip ideas. Just things that like sometimes I'll see nature shows and I'll think, wow, I never thought that, you know, that place would be somewhere I'd be interested in going and I'll write that down. So again, these are running lists. It's not necessarily like that you're going to know all of them in your head right away. Let's see. Oh, oh, I'm skipping ahead because like I said, I'm not going to go over everything because there will be other videos to talk about things uh, in the journal. But a couple of years ago, I did also go to another event with a life coach uh, locally, and I really liked the questions. It was all about living, um, living by design, not default. I believe that was the name of the class. And I really liked the exercises that we did, so I have adopted them in my journal, and I've done them for the past couple of years. So... And there's actually some crossover into Franklin Covey, like I mentioned earlier, because uh, in the journal system, there are some similar questions as well. But again, it's all like different routes to the same end, you know. Uh, we it, This is something, I don't think I've done this since this year, but it is it is in this journal that I'm looking at. We did write our obituary, which is an interesting activity to do. Um, it It kind of helps you identify what do you want to really be remembered for you know it's like when you get down to the nitty-gritty of it what is most important for you to have given as a contribution to the world once you're gone so it's a pretty interesting I again I only did it the one time but I do have it in this journal here and it would be something cool to do if you have never done that but into the questions from the class, the first one was, what matters to me most? And it's interesting because now I have three or four journals where I've done this. And I was just looking as I was getting my 2021 together. It's really interesting to see over the past few years that my lists are similar because my the things that matter to me most pretty much stay similar. However, I prioritize them, and I think what's interesting is certain years there's something that really was like just this burning thing for that year that I really wanted to fix or just it was like, this is going to be my year of such and such, you know. Um, and so even though the lists are similar, there are definitely different levels of the priority and, and uh, what, what mattered most there's always there's always a different one at the top of the list for every year. So that's something fun to consider. This is also from the class, but another sort of Franklin Covey thing too. It's important to identify what roles you have in your life. And this goes back similar to that other list where it was like, what do I want to be? Because th some of those things could be your roles in life. And once you identify each one of your roles so it could be a spouse it could be a pet owner it could be a family member it could be uh, a friend you know your work there's various roles we all probably have about eight to ten roles that we play and then what you do is you write out a little vision statement not unlike the vision statement that i made for the year but a vision of What's, what's your ideal vision of you in that role? Like say it's friendship for example. I'll just read this, what I wrote. I'm a loving and thoughtful friend and my friends enjoy my company. We have fun together easily and I can be myself and they like me for who I am. I spend time with those who lift my spirits and who I feel most comfortable and compatible with. So that's an example of the vision that I have for me as a friend. And also actually for my friends, that like who I choose to be a friend in my life too. So that's just an example and you do that for all of the roles. All right. 
Am I getting to the end here? You just cross reference and see, because I have a couple of journals. Just make sure that I didn't skip anything. Oh, actually, this is a new one because the other journal I was looking at, I hadn't gone to the seminar that I went to the year after. So again, another seminar. <laughs> I like to go to seminars. Um, but one seminar that I went to last summer was the big hot button word was satisfaction. So not unlike gratitude or contentment, the word was satisfaction. So looking for things in life, again, this is like those joyful simplicities that we're going to be getting a lot of in the book and my personal personal, what did I call them? I called them my simple pleasures. <laughs> so same sort of thing. Um, but satisfaction is, is again, something to contemplate. Like what, what is bringing me satisfaction? And you might, you know, I don't have a list, but you might also consider thinking about what is not bringing you satisfaction because those might be things that you'd be looking to eliminate from your life. But so my list, and it's actually, I was looking at it last night, it's actually two pages. Um, but I went and I made a list of what does my satisfying life look like? This doesn't necessarily mean that I have all these things, but what in an ideal situation would be my life to complete satisfaction? So again, something else to dream about. Oh, also, in addition to the yearly list of things that I want to do and experience, I also map out the year. And, and this might be, I might be fast forwarding a little bit for some of you. If this is your first encounter with Sarah Von Brannock and her book, then this might be something you would do next year or you could potentially get it set up and then do it as you're going along in the year. But because I'm familiar, at least with her past edition of this book, which I mentioned in my intro video is somewhat similar to this, I have a sense of for every season, because I've got winter, spring, summer, fall, and then I have a list on the next page of all the months. I have a sense of some of the things that I wanna make sure that I do every year. So like if you made a list of all your favorite things to do in the winter and all your favorite things to do in spring, summer, and fall. So again, I hate to keep saying bucket list, but it is, and most people know what that is. So it's kind of like, what do I definitely wanna do? Like what, maybe in the fall, it's, I always go apple picking. I did that when I was growing up and I like to get the fresh apple cider and a donut and like, so it actually, I don't even want to discourage you. I mentioned, don't do this if you don't know the book, but I bet you could just sit down and write down your various things for all of your favorite things that you like to do every season. And then maybe you could also do the months as well ahead of time. Some of my things that I've written down from the months are things that have come out of the book, activities, or I mentioned the joyful simplicities that she mentions at the end of every uh, month, and some of those I just really have adopted, or I've come up with my own things. Um, because this whole journey is all about living authentically, and really, she talks about excavating your soul. Now, that sounds really drastic, but in this day and age that we live in, our souls need excavation because we're usually just, it's like you gotta find yourself again between working and just getting through life. It's, it's hard to sometimes to carve out the time to really think, hey, what do I want? And to not get into your head, like I said, of, oh, I'm not gonna write that down because that's impossible. Like, this is about dreaming, this is about the sky's the limit. This is like if there were no no obstacles of any kind and everything was just handed to you, what could you do? And it, it should be a positive thing, at least I hope. I don't want to set that up and, and then somebody just say like, oh, that was the worst thing I ever did. Now I hate my life because it's not, it's meant to be a positive thing. So I hope that that is a positive thing for you. And I think we've come to the end of the section in my journal that I wanted to share. Um, I'm, I will be mentioning my journal a lot though, I'm sure. There will be a lot of journal activities and 
things to think about. One thing I'll say too is when I want to contemplate something, like, cause there are things that I'm just, oh, I didn't want to make a list of that or I want to be thinking about that. Where is that? Oh, in the front, I will put a little post-it note with some things, um, you know, things to contemplate and reflect on so that the next time I sit down with my journal, oh yeah, I wanted to, how do I feel about such and such or things like that. So again, my journal is like my friend. It's not where I voice my, my laments, although I can sometimes get on a rant, but it's not like a dear diary, my life is so frustrating or whatever. I try to, I really do try to keep this as a positive thing and a, a self exploration, self growth sort of positive place. So I hope you got a little bit out of that. I'd love it if you share what you do or if you are inspired to do this and you come up with any really cool insights from it or you think, hey, Carolyn, you should uh, think about doing this particular list that I've been doing for so long. I would love that because any opportunity to have time with my journal, I am up for it. So thanks for sharing. Thanks for being along with us. There'll be so much more. There probably will be quite a few videos in January just to let you know, uh, probably more than other months too because of the way the book is set up as far as like setting us up for the journal, for the journey, sorry, I'm thinking my journal. Um, and and going over the principles themselves and everything. So there will be a lot here at the beginning of the year. But again, it's momentum. We're on our way to our great year and whatever your intention is, I I am on board with, with you and I'm glad you're here. Thanks again, bye.